Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about the March outlook, which includes a polar vortex split, severe weather, heavy snow, and flooding rains. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is your March 1st update. So it's a good time to kind of give you an overall snapshot on the month ahead. I know we got a very you know travel month a lot of people want to get outdoors after the winter month but i know we got spring break coming up so it's important to kind of give you an overall summary and what to expect for the month ahead and this week <laughs> we got a lot of sinking air and a lot of sun to contend with for a good chunk of the country and these well above average temperatures so a lot of you are outdoors uh, this week experiencing a lot of the sunshine in a good chunk of the country. But just to the north of there, you can actually see this dominating ridge. There is a buckle in the jet stream, and that allows the polar jet here to be active with that atmospheric river. And yesterday, man, it, it places into Seattle got pummeled with almost three inches of rain with that very heavy rain continuing to, to set up in that part of the country into the pacific northwest but we do see a little bit of buckle as well along the great lakes that sets the stage for several clipper systems that they're going to be dealing with some you know light to moderate snow about one to three inches up, up here but for the rest of the country our is going to be experiencing those well above average temperature anomalies but all that changes next week because we head north <laughs> up here in the stratosphere so we've been talking about the polar vortex i know we had a polar vortex kind of elongation or a stretching out last week that sent all the colder air that went back up in the Arctic. Now it's actually next week, it's gonna buckle again. If it not, it's actually gonna be splitting into a polar vortex split. It sends some one of those polar lobes down south again. And when it heads south, that's gonna be heading south over the Western US. And that's gonna be setting the stage for a pretty good trough out here off the West about around uh, march 5th time frame that's going to bring all the inclement weather all the the colder temperatures out here in california nevada go, going into to utah with that trough heading out west that's going to set the stage into that class of instability with all those warmer temperatures out in the central and in eastern two-thirds of the u.s and as this continues to push slowly i mean slowly throughout the week next week that is going to be setting the stage for, unfortunately, some severe weather. So as we move through time and take a look at that March 5th outlook, we have the jet stream buckling. There's the trough setting up off the West Coast. As it lifts and as it pulls in some of that uh, Pacific and especially the Gulf moisture, as it continues to ride off through Saturday, right here, that's where our start, the origination point of some severe weather and that's going to be setting up on portions of Iowa coming up on the day on Saturday. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already set out a 15% chance of severe weather in, around, uh, in and around uh, Iowa there, right along that jet where it's going to be tapping. There's a warm front here. You got the upper level low right along that triple point. And that is going to be the setting the stage for that severe weather. And I think that's just going to be a kind of a, a daily occurrence as we move through time of next week with that trough off the west coast pushing further east as we go through time those are here's your colder temperature anomalies as we get into that monday march 7th time frame with those well below average temperatures pushing further south and that'll reach into portions of oklahoma as well as into texas and there's the warm sector out ahead of it into the southeast as much of the east coast they're waiting for that clash and that those uh, temperature anomalies to hit that area and underneath that that is going to be creating that lift where you have all the warm sector you got higher dew points you're going to be tapping into those 60 dew points once it once that low level jet you know hits this air mass that is going to create the lift especially with all those warm uh, temperature anomalies out here in the gulf of mexico portions of east texas uh, portions of eastern Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama into Georgia, back into Arkansas, into Missouri, in the Tennessee Valley, into, into Kentucky, are going to be experiencing those very heavy rainfalls uh, through that 8th and 12th time frame. And some of, this, uh, some of these could be on the form of severe weather. 
as well. And then to the north of that, once the severe weather moves out of Iowa, you've got that 850 low to contend with. And right there, that is where you're gonna be setting up the, for some of that heavier snow that's gonna be moving out of the Rockies by the time we get into that March 9th and 11th time frame. We got heavy snow moving out of the Rockies, lifting north northeast, uh, heading through Nebraska, heading through Iowa here as well as portions of South Dakota and into, uh, into uh, Minnesota, as well as uh, Wisconsin here with that heavier snow lifting, lifting off through that 9th and 11th time frame and to the south of there where that low level jet is gonna be active. So I know a lot of people are gonna be traveling this, this week. That is a lot, spring break for a good chunk of the country. If you got plans to head west, especially for truck drivers and people that have uh, airplane tickets to head west you could be experiencing a lot of turbulence underneath that low level jet in places into the four corners region and these areas are no stranger to heavy winds uh, especially in west texas into the the rocky mountains here so definitely be on the lookout if you got uh, a lot of travel plans you're gonna be driving in the car expect a a bumpy ride as you head uh, head west and fly into the air you're going to be experiencing some of that turbulence as well and that is next week that is through the 8th through the 12th time frame so if we expand the view and take a look at some of the you know the precipitation anomalies which you can expect for the next 10 days primarily you got the atmospheric river continued to be active i think the polar uh, the polar jet is going to be coming more active as you've seen seen as the last couple of days with that atmospheric river coming back I think that continues to remain active with these green shaded areas. That is your above average precipitation. These areas in brown into California, into the desert southwest, much of West Texas into, you know, into the Four Corners region. You're going to be experiencing those below average precipitation anomalies with the La Nina continuing to remain in full effect. But once it taps into that Gulf moisture, I mean, once it taps into the Gulf of Mexico, that's going to create plenty of fuel to fuel these instigating thunderstorms and we could be looking at some heavy rain along with some severe weather and a good chunk of east texas and oklahoma and parts of the arklatex here going through the tennessee valley as well as uh, kentucky and then spread it into the ohio valley as well as to the mid-atlantic states or predominantly much of the eastern the carolinas uh, south carolina into florida remains below average uh, precipitation anomalies and to the north of there you're going to be getting some snow so here's the probability of seeing some of those three inch snow amounts or greater and all these areas in red that's the areas that you can pretty much 100 percent guarantee you're going to be getting at least three inches of snow with that active trough that's going to be setting it off off the west coast underneath that it's going to have plenty of lift to produce some of those heavier snow showers and that is going to tra traverse across along with the active polar jet here through through the through the northern states and going through por portions of uh, wisconsin here into michigan once it gets into the mid-atlantic you're still going to be under those you know above average temperature anomalies for a good chunk of the first half of the month but i do think that changes once it gets into the second half of the month but right now we're looking at you know some of those heavier snows well to the north into uh, north uh, New England here, and then some of the, the some of the lighter amounts as we get into uh, the Mid Atlantic states and off the I ninety five uh, corridor. And as we expand the view and get into towards that mid month snapshot, like I mentioned, we've got that trough that's going to be setting up for next week, and it's going to be a slow progression. It's going to just going to be more or less moseying on along as it moves off from the west to the east and that is going to create the stage for that severe weather along with that flooding rains but eventually that trough heads heads east and so by the time we get into that middle of the month time frame i think a lot of the colder temperature anomalies will be setting up over over parts of the great lakes into the northeast getting into new england by then with those below average uh temperature anomalies and uh, underneath that you're going to have a lot of lift you're going to have still those warm temperature anomalies down here in the gulf here to have that lift and with that clash in temperatures that's going to create the stage for those above average precipitation as we get into the middle of the month setting up over the southeast and off the east coast through the mid-atlantic as well 
off uh, the northeast as well. And then there's the snow as we get towards the middle of the month. As that low will progress from west to east, it brings the snow with it. So you have some of the higher probabilities extending further east. So no, winter is not over. It comes back because, you, you know, you warm up and then you get cold again. So as we get towards the middle of the month, I do feel that underneath that trough, we're still going to have that instability where we're, we're going to be creating some of those heavier snow showers. And that with the jet stream buckling a little bit further south, that'll bring the snow line further south. So places into, uh, you know, Kansas, getting into Missouri, into parts of the Ohio Valley, getting into portions of West Virginia, as well as portions of, um, of you know, into, you know, Delaware, into Dover, into places into Jersey, I think are gonna be picking up some snowfall uh, during that time frame. but that probably won't be until towards the, the middle of the month. But if we expand the view and go towards the third week of the month, I do feel that colder temperatures will continue to pre progress down. With that polar vortex split that we talked about, it'll send pulses and pulses of energy of colder temperature anomalies down from the Arctic through Canada, hitting towards uh, the US. We'll have more troughs setting up off the West Coast with those uh, below average temperature anomalies to the west, to the north, with that active polar uh, jet. And then the subtropical jet remains inactive <laughs> because it's basically a classic La Nina type setup. We have these above average temperature anomalies setting up for the third week of March for a good chunk of the southwest, much of the south, southern plains, and much uh, along the southern tier of uh, pl places into you know Florida. And then I think as we get into the, you know, the end of the month, the end of March timeframe, I still feel we've got that trough setting up off the West Coast. So whenever you typically get a trough off the West Coast and you got warmer temperature anomalies to the South, you're still gonna be setting the stage for severe weather once it taps into that Gulf moisture. So this area right here, I'm definitely concerned about an active month for severe weather with just the setup, just relentless amount of, of colder temperature anomalies originating, originating out west. And then once you hit the warm sector again and making that clash, we'll have rapid temperature swings throughout the month. I do feel it's gonna be an active month for uh, severe weather. And you got the La Nina still continuing. I mean, I think, you know, this is the latest summary from the Climate Prediction Center. We've seen the La Nina since the middle of October, and I think it just continues. I mean, we still basically have an 80% chance of the La Nina continuing all the way through March, a little bit lesser chance going in through April, but I think it predominantly stays active for a good chunk of spring at, for, that, with, for that La Nina. And here's the, here's the temperature anomaly. And this is what we've been dealing with really since the La Nina started. We got those well below average temperature anomalies out here in the equatorial Pacific. That essentially makes the subtropical jet a lot less active and the polar jet becomes more active. We had a little bit of die down in the Pacific Northwest, but I think it comes back with the vengeance uh, this week. So as troughs dig down off the West Coast, look what it's got to tap into. These are well below average temperature anomalies, so it doesn't really have that much left. So you got you got pretty dry conditions off off into California, off the Southwest, and really parts of uh, you know the Four Corners regions, getting into parts of you know getting into Kansas in the middle the middle section of the country. It's not really until they tap into this well above average temperature anomalies out here into the Gulf of Mexico. Once it taps into that moisture, that's why I think East Texas and parts of Eastern Oklahoma are pretty much on the borderline. But once you get into the Southeast, it's all fair game. I mean, it's all hands on deck with these well above average temperature sea surface anomalies down here. And as these systems move across with that low level jet, it's got plenty of fuel to fuel these storms and then all it takes is that you know southwest wind to, to come across and you got a lot of instability and here's the setup i mean talk about a classic la nina i mean this is all day long for the next 30 days uh precipitation anomalies with the active polar jet the sub you know the polar jet comes through you got the active pacific atmospheric river off the uh off the pacific coast here 
through the Rocky Mountains. This is the only thing that does change, but it is March. This is typically what you see in March into the Rockies where you have the, the most snow you typically see all season into the Rockies and places in Denver. And I don't think that's gonna be any different this month, but down to the South where you got the less active subtropical jet, I mean, there you go. I mean, that's classic La Nina right here. Below average temperature anomalies in California, much of the desert Southwest, really much of Texas because you're working with the sea surface temperatures. I mean, even when the winds turn around to the south, look at those below average temperature anomalies right off the coast. So a south wind pulling up through Texas hits those below average temperature anomalies, that just shuts down the flow predominantly, and you see some of those below average temperatures. But once that jet swings over and taps into these well above average temperatures, that's why you set the stage for plenty of fuel once you hit the southeast, and this month's not going to be any different with those well above average uh, precipitation anomalies hitting this region into the southeast, into the Tennessee Valley, into the Ohio Valley. This is the area that I think I'm most concerned about with flooding rains and that severe weather threat as we get deeper into the month of March, but predominantly much of the central and eastern two thirds of the U.S. are going to be seeing above average rains while the south, the southern plains, and much of Florida is gonna be seeing below average rains. And as these troughs kick in, here's the latest uh, European weeklies on the snow. No, winter is not over. We got successful troughs digging in off the west coast, and now these move through the east, and you have those clashes. What, you're gonna get warm-ups. You're gonna get rapid warm-ups, but then you're gonna get cold fronts too. And with that, co those cold fronts, you're gonna get that snow underneath that. So I still think we're gonna be pr pretty good snows especially into the Rocky Mountains, off the West Coast, off the Pacific Northwest, through the, nor north, uh, through the north here, into the, the Central Plains, going into our northern, northern tier, into the upper Great Lakes, through the Ohio Valley and portions of the Mid-Atlantic states as well, through the Northeast. So I do feel we're still gonna have some fairly significant snows into the month of March and by no means do I think winter is over so if it is warm in your neck of the woods it's only going to be a matter of time before it gets cold again as these systems come across from west to east uh, throughout the month so I appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video and definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me in the next update where I protect you before and after the storm